All right, let's uh, resume. Let me first start out by repeating the announcement that I made went to break. That we're going to flip the order of the concepts being presented. We'll start with the ANVIL con concept and then move to the Diverse Genome Research Centers. I'll, I'll remind Council that before NHGRI can publish a funding opportunity announcement that has a set aside of funds associated with it, we have to seek concept clearance or approval for, in a public meeting. And we always use our Council meetings so that the council members are aware of all of the funding opportunity announcements being issued by NHGR. So we'll start with the analysis, visualization, and informatics lab space and goal renewal. It's actually got two parts to it. The first will be a presentation from Chris Wellington on the renewal of the Anvil resource. And then Ken Weiler will give a, pre a presentation about the clinical component of ANVIL. So Chris, do you wanna show your slides, please? Yes, thank you. Can you see them, Rudy? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, well, thank you, Rudy. So today, as Rudy just said, Ken Wiley and I will be presenting on the renewal plans for the NHGRI Genomic Data Science Analysis Visualization and Informatics Lab Space, or ANVIL. The ANVIL, is NHGRI's cloud-based genomic data sharing and analysis platform. It seeks to use cloud computing to democratize access to high-performance compute resources and improve security. It is focused on genomics as a broad view of genomic data to include primary sequence data, variant level data, functional data, phenotypic data, and analysis products. Anvil supports flexible and secure data sharing. Data can be completely private shared within a consortium or shared globally. And those shared data could be open access or controlled access mediated by NIH data access tools. And finally, the ANVIL is an analysis platform, not only a place for downloading data. The ANVIL was funded through two awards, one to the Broad Institute and one to Johns Hopkins University, starting in 2018 and running into 2023. In order to evaluate the progress and gather input on a potential renewal, NHGRI held a workshop on the future directions of the end in October of 2021. The outcomes of that workshop were presented during our last council meeting this past February, and also further discussed with the Genomic Data Science Working Group of Council. And now here we are in May, bringing to you a concept clearance. As Rudy said, this concept clearance has two components, each with its own RFA. First will be a limited competition RFA to support and improve the existing infrastructure. I will be talking about this today in three parts. First, where Anvil is today. Second, where we see Anvil going in the future. And third, why we think the limited competition RFA is the way to get there. And then Ken Wiley will be presenting on the second element of this concept, the open competition RFA to add clinical components to me. Taken together, we think that these two RFAs will allow us to build on the successes of Anvil and better serve our user communities. So first, where is Anvil today? I'm going to give a whirlwind snapshot of what Anvil's accomplished. I'd encourage anyone interested to check out the Anvil for themselves for more information. So data sharing is a key goal for Anvil. To date, the Anvil has ingested more than four petabytes of data from over 600,000 research subjects across more than 20 research networks. This graph shows Anvil's data ingestion over time by research network. You can see the link at the bottom for the interactive version. If I still want to call out a couple of these, you can see the first major data set, high coverage thousand genomes. See the Centers for Common Disease Genomics, Genotype Tissue Expression Project, the Electronic Medical Records and Genomics, or Emerge Consortium, and the Telomer to Telomer Group that Eric mentioned earlier this morning. The more NHGRI research networks are currently being onboarded, we're particularly excited to bring in more functional and other data types from programs such as the Impact of Genomic Variation on Function, or IGBF, and the Genomics Research to Elucidate the Genetics of Rare Diseases, or Gregor Project. Now at current pricing, storing the data shown here on the cloud could cost about a million dollars a year. So you can see the importance of enabling researchers to access this data without copying. And accessing the data is a great start, 
but we really care about what people can do with those data. And this is where Anvil's analysis platform, our secure federated data analysis ecosystem comes into play. This image is from the same paper I cited earlier and shows a subset of the major tool environments available on Anvil. You can see Terra, DocStore, Bioconductor, Galaxy, Jupiter, and Gen3 with APIs in the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health and the Fast Health Interoperability Resources. And all of this is within a FedRAMP certified environment. This all gives tremendous capabilities to Anvil, but you can also imagine it being overwhelming for users. And that's where outreach and user engagement take center stage. The Anvil has been hosting and participating in many events, some for specific NHGRI programs, like the Magic Jamboree, with the genome sequencing program. Some have been for groups such as the GDSCN and Howard University's FADS, and others have been broader, such as workshops at ASHG. The Anvil Cloud Credits Program has also provided credits for users and built relationships between those users and the Anvil developers to understand their specific needs. So I hope I've shown you very briefly some of why we think Anvil has been successful. Now I want to turn to where we want to see Anvil go in the future. To distill one of the key themes in that workshop I mentioned earlier, we want to see Anvil increase its presence as a multifunctional discovery platform for genomics. This means continuing what Anvil is doing today, things like ingesting data, providing an analysis platform, and doing outreach. But it also means taking on new responsibilities. And there are four we want to emphasize increasing the availability of tools, improving interoperability with other NIH cloud resources, addressing barriers to cloud computing, and supporting the clinical research community. I'll be discussing these first three under this RFA, while Ken Wiley will discuss the final under the clinical RFA. These first three are quite ambitious, and I'll start with the first, increasing the availability of tools. First of all, why would we even call out tools? And I just showed that Anvil has already more than 10,000 available for those various component platforms. The short answer is that genomics is a data intensive science. It's dependent on having the appropriate tools, for data processing and analysis. While the idea of an app store is a great starting point, our tool ecosystem needs even more than that. We need a workflow ecosystem. It makes it easy for users to leverage current best practices. We need to make it easy for users to harmonize and integrate their data, with those data sets already on you. We also recognize that existing tools only get you so far. Users need to be able to bring their own tools to Anvil without compromising security. We also need what you might call tools about tools that can do things like estimate the cost of running a given analysis. And finally, we need improved search capabilities for data tools, workflows, and analysis. But even with all of this, we don't want Anvil to become a silo. There are many cloud platforms at NIH, and science should not stop the boundaries. The Anvil is a founding member of the NIH Cloud Platforms Interoperability Office, NCPI, the key aims of which include enabling cross-platform single sign-on, commonly known as authentication and authorization, enabling cross-platform data discovery, and enabling cross-platform exchange of data sets, tools, and workflows. NCPI has made progress toward these aims, specifically through the researcher auth service, implementation of GA4GH data repository service identifiers, and the use of fast health interoperability resource APIs. Well, in the coming phase is to turn these efforts into fully functional features for end users. We look forward to a user being able to log in once, find data across multiple platforms and jointly analyze those data, all while respecting data use limitations, and not compromising security of sensitive data. This level of interoperability is challenging, but we think it's critical to realizing the benefits of cloud computing, which is important because we recognize that there are barriers. So another focus of this next phase of Anvil will be to continue to address those barriers. We'll hear from Ken later about barriers specific to the clinical space so here, I'll talk more broadly. The cost barriers are many. There's absolute cost, the unpredictability of the cost, and then the billing itself. And for students, we recognize that any model requires pulling out a personal credit card is a huge barrier. 
data access is challenging on and off the cloud. John Anvil, the richness of the data and the tools available make any challenges accessible and particularly frustrating. User experience cloud platforms, including Anvil, is still a work in progress. And better support for curriculum development is critical for training the next generation of users. And finally, we want to empower and expand opportunities for genomic data science and limited resource institutions. Addressing each of these barriers will require a combination of technologies, policies, and training. It's just as take the first, for example, for cost barriers. This might be technologies to prevent runaway charges, policies about who's responsible for what costs, and training for managing spending. The Anvil is working to address all of these barriers already, but we think that by further focusing on these in the next phase, we can make the platform even more successful. Talked about where Anvil has been, where we want to see it go, but why do we think that limited competition RFA is the way to get us there? Well, first, continuing to support the Anvil through the Broad and Hopkins allows NHGRI to continue leveraging our investments in those current teams, platforms, tools, services, documentation, and processes. It's taken four years of hard work to get us to where we are today. But it's not just about those past investments. We also recognize that changing the teams now because of significant disruptions for our users. At the same time though, things have changed over the past four years. And so by releasing this as an RFA, NHGRI has the opportunity to add new requirements. These could be scientific, and they could also be more about how the program is managed, about how we achieve transparency with the community and how the community input shapes the priorities and directions of the And finally, the RFA process allows us to incorporate input from peer review. We recognize that limited competition RFAs are unusual for us, but in this case, we think that the cost of changing the teams is so high that we really don't see gains. And given that, we think it's best to be open and upfront with the applicant community by making this limited competition. Now, one concern in going with the existing teams, whether via a limited or open competition, is so we're locking ourselves into a single platform. And this is where we plan to take advantage the ability to specify new requirements in the RFA to ensure that Anvil's position to take advantage of multiple compute platforms and technologies moving forward. So in short, given the successes of Anvil, we're excited to keep moving forward and think that a limited competition RFA is both the best and the most transparent way. Through this RFA, we plan to support two cooperative agreement D24 awards for five years. The applicants will be limited to the current Anvil awardees. We plan to commit six and a half million dollars per year in total cost, which is flat with the current cost of Anvil. With that, thank you for your time. We'll turn this over to Ken to talk about our plans for the clinical side of Anvil. Thank you, Chris. Can people hear me? Okay, yes. So let me share my screen. Okay. And so are you seeing um, my title slide? Yes, Tim, you're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rudy. So yes, I'll be presenting the Anvil Clinical Resource presentation uh, that's part of the uh, Anvil Renewal concept. And so as Chris mentioned, um, the, we wanna leverage the existing ecosystem that we've invested in with, in terms of providing the next step for Anvil. And so one of the things we wanted to look at is how could this resource uh, serve the clinical resource community? So our process in trying to understand how Anvil could provide the support to the clinical research community actually began with the Genomic Medicine 13 meeting, which was titled Developing a Clinical uh, Genomics Informatics Research Agenda, which occurred in February of 2021. This in addition to the uh, Future Directions uh, um, workshop that occurred last year, allowed us to be able to identify what Anvil could do to possibly support the clinical research community. And this was provided by the external communities and participants that attended these meetings. Um, these include incorporate, ability to incorporate tools for the genomic-based clinical research into ANVIL. Um, we wanna add investigators with clinical research priorities in the development of ANVIL's infrastructure and services. Uh, we also want to encourage inv investigators to identify use cases for clinical research and analysis while also establishing trust relationships with clinical sites and hospitals so that they would uh, use ANVIL for their clinical research analysis needs. 
and also to provide support to NHGRI funded programs and their ability to utilize Anvil also for their genome based research needs. When we think about the approaches and requirements and process that we want to take to address uh, the, our interest in uh, having animal support the clinical genomics research community, we felt the need to have a comprehensive approach uh, instead of a piecemeal approach for this. Uh, we want to, in order to do this, we realized that though the current animal team is, is capable, we also, and maintaining and providing the resources for, for Anvil and the, and the research community, we really felt it would be useful to have a group that's just focused on the clinic, on the, providing the clinical research expertise to Anvil. So we were looking for groups that had primarily that the expertise uh, to do clinical, general-based clinical research uh, to be added into the existing Anvil uh, team. Um, in order to do this, we felt that an open competition would be beneficial in order to address uh, the approaches and requirements that we're looking for uh, in order to have Anvil serve the uh, uh, genome-based clinical research community. So the ACR goal is to actually leverage the existing Anvil ecosystem uh, to provide a suite of interoperable clinical components to assist users in the transition to a collaborative all-digital environment to foster genomic-based clinical research. So the clinical components actually include deploying and implementing clinical software tools and workflows, uh, also developing innovative methods for storing, generating, and returning clinical results, um, provide outreach and education that's tailored to the clinical genomics research community, while also uh, providing, building on the uh, current Anvil data access and security, but to help foster clinical, clinical uh, genome-based clinical research. When discussing developing and implementing clinical research and tools, uh, we want the Anvil, the ACR team, because it's really focused on the team here, to be able to adopt and integrate uh, software and tools that are more commonly used uh, for users to visualize and analyze uh, heterogeneous data sets. Uh, so this isn't just genomics, it's also imaging data, social determinants of health data, uh, to develop predictive modeling and variant interpretation uh, capabilities uh, as part of their analysis. Uh, we also want the existing ACR team to work with the next existing ACR, the ACR team to work with the existing Anvil team uh, to identify also with the tools and workflows and, and, and software that already in Anvil, understand how those existing tools and uh, workflows and, and software packages could actually be used to serve the genome-based research community. In addition, we, uh, we want the ACR itself to also provide a foundation for users to develop and develop uh, and provide uh, and do research to use digital health applications uh, that can monitor and manage genomic-based health conditions. And we want to, I want to make this clear. We're not expecting the ACR team on the ACR to develop those health applications, but better yet, we want them to create an ecosystem within the Anvil current ecosystem to be able to provide ability for the researchers to uh, develop their own health applications that will actually leverage the data sets that we have while also bringing in additional data sets for those purposes. Uh, we understand that health applications are going to play an important role in empowering patients to manage their health. And we feel like the, the Anvil is in a, it would be an ideal place for people to, for institutions and research institutions to have a place where they can actually develop those tools and resources. And so we want the ACR to be able to provide that ecosystem or a foundation for that ecosystem for those activities to occur. In addition, we want the ACR team to, when we look at outreach and education that's tailored for the clinical genomics research community, we want the ACR team to leverage the existing animal outreach and education resources to enable the genomic research communities to be able to utilize and analyze genomic-based clinical genomics data. Uh, these efforts should include, but they're not extent limited to uh, conducting focus group sessions, developing use cases, providing individualized uh, education sessions that can serve the clinical the genomic-based clinical research community, while also soliciting and addressing users' feedback about Anvil interfaces, data sets, and general operations. So again, we want these, the ACR team to actually leverage the existing Anvil outreach and education resources to help foster those capabilities. When looking at developing innovative methods for storing, generating, and returning clinical results, we want the ACR to provide a foundation, again, for users to develop innovative methods for conducting analysis and disseminating the clinical reports for research and um, for researchers. Um, in addition, we want the ACR team to work with the ANVIL team uh, to develop and implement pilots that will leverage Health Level 7's fast healthcare interoperability resources, as well as Global Alliance for Genomics and Health standards 
and application program interfaces in order to better understand how these standards and APIs can be used in ANVIL for genomic-based clinical research. Uh, we want the ACR team also to work with users to identify uh, how ANVIL can serve their needs in conducting genomic-based clinical research. Under data access and security, we want the ANVIL, want the ACR to be able to, well, the ACR is actually expected to adhere to the existing data access and security requirements of ANVIL. But we also want them to take a step further. We also want the ACR team to actually work with the existing ANVIL team to be able to understand how ANVIL can address the security needs of clinical research sites in order, for example, in making ANVIL a HIPAA compliant resource. So ANVIL is a HIPAA compatible resource now. What's really missing is really the, uh, the, the necessary understanding of the agreements that need to be put in place for research sites in order to foster the ability to uh, have ANVIL support HIPAA, da HIPAA uh, data sets. And so we want the, ANVIL, the ACR team to be able to help provide that level of expertise and um, to help uh, make ANVIL a HIPAA compliant resource. So there's a lot of um, expectations on the ACR and therefore it means that there's a lot, the ACR team itself has to be diverse in their capabilities. And so when we look at the, what kind of capabilities that we're looking for as far as expertise for the ACR team, we clearly want the ACR team to have clinical informatics experience. Um, in addition, they need to also have experience in using cloud platforms. Um, we also have to be able to have the experience to understand how to leverage and combine diverse data sets to conduct genomic-based clinical research analysis. While also they need to have the expertise to build trust relationships with clinical research sites and hospitals in order to assist their efforts in developing use cases for use in ACR for the genomic-based clinical research needs. So when we look at the, the look at the budget summary for the entire ANVIL renewal, we're seeing that there's going to be a total of three cooperative agreements, but all of them will be U24 awards. Uh, each of them will be for five years starting FY23 to FY 2027. Um, for the ANVIL renewal one, we're expecting two awards that are limited to the ANVIL primary awardees, while the ACR will be one award that excludes the ANVIL primary awardees, but, awardees, uh, but will be open to those that are part of the subcontracts. Uh, the ACR budget is for 1.5 million per year for five years. And as you can see here, this is on top of the 6.5 million per year for the ANVIL renewal. At the end of this, what we're hoping that we'll have, what we hope we're anticipating having is really a more comprehensive ecosystem that had for both uh, clinical research, basic research and education outreach within the ANVIL ecosystem as shown here. You will see ANVIL being able to have a test environment for developing genome-based health applications, be able to combine heterogeneous data sets for genome-based clinical research analysis. You'll see tools that were already existing that uh, will actually be uh, modified and uh, used to help foster uh, genome-based clinical research. You'll see idea of having the ability to generate reports within ANVIL and make them accessible for users to access, and also a HIPAA compliant resource while also understanding how we can have leverage FHIR and GA4GH standards and APIs. So our discussions for the annual renewal are Dr. Kulo, Dr. Rich, Dr. Choye Sakaya. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Um, I would like to try to have discussions of the two separate RFAs here. Let's see if we can do that just for a little clarity purpose. So do we want to start out with the renewal? So Iftikhar, if you have questions or comments related to the renewal RFA, please bring them up now. Yeah, thanks to Chris and uh, uh, Ken for the presentation. Um, I think uh, this is really an important um, initiative from the NHGRI. It builds on <clears throat> the previous cycle which started in 2018. And I think this concept sheet is the result of due diligence uh, based on review of the previous uh, output from um, the annual awardees and then the conduct of a, uh, of a review in the fall, uh, which was attended by different um, diverse experts uh, who provided uh, SWOT analysis and, and some feedback and then subsequent discussions as were outlined by Chris and that have led to this concept sheet. So, I'm supportive of this. This is really an important area. <clears throat> um, the, the issue of limited um, competition was um, mentioned by Chris. Uh, and I think that um, 
overall, uh, the, the, the direction is right one. I, I see this as a, uh, as a um, particularly powerful force in three areas. One is a reduction of disparities in genomic medicine. I think if Anvil is able to collate disparate data sets from different sources, that would really be a huge step towards reducing disparities. As you know, we have, uh, for example, for GWAS, it's an overwhelmingly Eurocentric uh, collection of cohorts, but there are these different diverse cohorts that are scattered and there are new ones that are built, um, being built. So if it was a kind of a repository of those um, uh, diverse data sets, that would really tremendously accelerate uh, research uh, in, into susceptibility variants for different groups and, uh, and help reduction of disparities. I think in particular, uh, it would be great to see that there is a conduit between all of us and Anvil in terms of data exchange. Um, it'd be sad not to see that both are NIH supported, um, but both have separate clouds. And to that extent, the interoperability is critical because NHL BI has data sets that would be very useful for genomic researchers. So I think that's a critical aspect that has to be emphasized. The second is a diversity and will can help kind of democratize um, genomic access so that it's not resident in just the citadels of academia. And I think it would be really nice to um, engage with the, the diversity uh, educational R25s and other efforts that were discussed at the last council meeting. And uh, even, even geographically, there are these data science deserts, as I would call them, that uh, you know, don't have access to you know, computational resources. So I think that is something that um, uh, Anvil can certainly help uh, promote um, both ease of access and data diversity. Uh, so uh, I, I guess in terms of the limited, uh, limited competition, you know, we would need to uh, uh, stimulate the, the existing sites to be as innovative as possible to, to build on what they've done and uh, incorporate uh, many of these uh, novel innovations or elements going forward, looking into the future. So I'll stop there for the, the uh, limited competition. And then I think we can go to the discussion later for the ACRs. Okay, Olga, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, that was great. I think it's uh, clearly a very important effort. I completely agree with everything Iftikhar said. I do also think that the uh, interoperability is going to be really critical and clearly you guys uh, get this. Um, it totally makes sense to do the, um, do the competition for the renewal restricted to the teams that have been very successfully driving this tool forward. But of course, that also means that it's really critical to have a very strong advisory structure and involvement to really ensure that this uh, goes full speed forward and is uh, proceeding in accordance to these plans. Uh, the institutions are obviously excellent and have a very strong track record. So there's no concerns, but it is also you know, sort of uh, part of that process that I think is going to be really critical. Um, I think the being able to bring this in so that it's not just interoperability within the uh, tools that NHGRI itself can, you know, focuses on, but exactly as if Dekar said, like really trying to think of it as broad as possible within uh, practical reasons, I think would be really nice. Uh, and indeed really bringing in uh, the broadest definition of data sets would be great, especially now that it's going to uh, start moving towards that, you know, clinical uh, aspects of things. And I won't talk about that more since we're going to talk about that separately. Okay, thank you. Steve, Rich? Yeah, thanks so much. Um, and, you know, I'll follow up on the points that if Qatar and uh, Olga made. And, you know, I think that, um, I guess in terms of the limited competition, obviously there's that negative perception that might be out in the community. And, and as uh, I think one way of, of dealing with that is to make certain, number one, that, that the, uh, there is no complacency, complacency of, the, of the applicants that they're you know, under the whip from an HGRI. 
uh, but also uh, make certain that whatever peer review input uh, of their application occurs, you know, they take that seriously and, and, and HGRI takes that seriously. And just reflecting on the workshop that was held in the past year, which was outstanding from the standpoint of having different experts coming in and, and discussing all the issues related to ANVIL and you know, for how it can be prepared for the next generation. I, I think you know, holding another workshop uh, with, the, uh, with the recipients of the, of the limited competition in the first year would probably make sense uh, just to make certain that you know, they provide everyone with you know what was what happened during peer review, uh, what were the comments, and then get input from all the other you know bright folks who uh, think about these a lot, and and that way they can avoid the maybe the technical lock in that happens uh, sometimes, and and make certain that you know they're not too restrictive of how Anvil is going to evolve. So otherwise, you know, I think this is, you know, obviously something that's important to NHGRI and important to the community. And uh, so I'll, I'll stop there. Okay, let's open this up for broad discussion. Gail, go ahead. Um, yes, so it's obviously very important to the community um, and the limited competition is clearly justified as you elaborated. And I really appreciated that. Um, I, given that though, um, I would love to see a robust structure for feedback from the community that's using Anvil and for Anvil to address that. I think, you know, responsiveness to the users, especially when you don't have an <laughs> uh, open competition, uh, would really be helpful in convincing the community that um, this limited competition uh, will be a, all positives and no negatives. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate that. Other comments or thoughts about the Anvil renewal segment? Okay, let's go back to the uh, Anvil clinical resource. And uh, if to Carl, I'll ask you to start off again. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, so uh, this is a really intriguing and, uh, in a way, exciting um, uh, proposal to create the ACR. Uh, I would say that my first response would be to make sure that the ACR is distinct from, you know, or distinguishes itself from work that's already being done uh, and has been done for several years. I think in particular, the Immersion Network for um, you know, EHR integration of genomic uh, data, clinical decision support, and uh, informatics pipelines. ClinGen for variant curation, um, uh, PGRN and other pharmacogenomic uh, efforts to link uh, pharmacogenomic information in the electronic health record. And so there are significant investments from NHGRI uh, into some of these elements, you know, uh, as part of the genomic medicine portfolio. So um, I think that ACR needs to really uh, set itself apart. And what I heard Ken was some very interesting thoughts um, uh, related to making this entity HIPAA compliant, uh, maybe having upgrade the FISMA um, labeling. Uh, uh, um, Ken mentioned digital apps. And most interestingly, a relationship with hospitals. Um, so perhaps we can elaborate on that. What exactly is meant by that? Would would this serve as a um, potential uh, clinical tool for uh, clinicians, where they can upload uh, certain data and then expect to get some um, clinical grade? Uh, results uh, or uh, analyses, uh, and in that case, um, you know, would that require, you know, standardized pipelines and working with NIST, for example, uh, would that require a clear uh, kind of label? Uh, and if we were to extend that, would that 
include potentially a patient um, conduit where patients, for example, currently when they have DTC results, they have the option of going to different sites where they can upload the, their VCF and, and, and get polygenic risk scores. So uh, it seems that we are tiptoeing towards a very interesting <laughs> interface between uh, clinical uh, domain and research domain. I think when we're talking about clinical research, that's already actually happening in uh, different formats. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, I would like uh, that to be spelled out in the RFA as to exactly you know, what some of those um, uh, directions entail. Um, so yeah, otherwise I think it's a, a very interesting, uh, intriguing new direction uh, for Anvil to take. Thank you. Do, okay. do I get? Go ahead and make a crack at it, yeah. Yeah, no, Anthony, thank you for that. No, you're, you're absolutely right. This, we have to be very careful about how the ACR is going to be set up within Anvil and how it's gonna serve the community. Um, in terms of being Anvil being used as a as a particular clin clinical diagnostic tool, Anvil's not ready for that. We're not we're not there yet. What I'm hoping for though is for the ACR to start off really addressing taking every steps for us to address the clinical to the general based clinical research community's needs and using Anvil. Um, where we come to those trust relationships, where it to me it starts it starts there when it comes to working with hospitals and working with uh, research sites, clinical general based research sites uh, to understand how AMWL can be used to um, for their needs by having like the ACR team work with them to develop uh, use cases uh, for using AMWL. And I think you need to take these iterative steps first to address the um, genome based clinical researchers needs. And then after that, we can assess where it's ideal for AMWL to sit in terms of the actual clinical diagnosis area uh, when it comes to genomic medicine. But I just don't think with the budget that, we, that we've uh, listed here for, AM, for the ACR and where we are in ANVIL that we can reach that goal of trying to have resources in ANVIL for uh, um, clinical diagnostic, diagnosis. Um, but I do see that, you know, you know, that you know, as far as our ability to try to address the genomic-based clinical researcher commu research community, I do think Anvil could be in a position to help address that, but you're right. We need to make sure we parse that out in a meaningful way so we can take those iterative steps to get to where our ultimate goal is. Did that address your question, Iftikhar? Yes. Okay. Okay, Ola, for the ACR. Uh, so I think just like Iftikhar said, I'm very uh, also very excited about moving this towards more of a clinical data uh, I do think you guys completely recognize the fact that this is really exciting, but of course the limitations absolutely as you outlined, I mean, uh, that it's, you know, with, what was it one, you know, within the budget provided and honestly the time and the scope, right? It's not going to solve every problem and make this a diagnostic tool. I think the most critical uh, step to get into, right, is exactly, as you said, being able to bring in HIPAA compliant data and being able to start integrating those sorts of you know, really more clinical types of data with the genomic data types that are uh, already in Anvil. And so uh, indeed identifying uh, key scenarios where this works and really making these interoperable and workable, I think would probably be the most critical next steps, right? Because there's all sorts of very exciting algorithmic challenges. There's all sorts of exciting technological innovations and I don't know if given the budget and the time, that's the, this is the right RFA for that. I'm really hopeful that in the future, maybe in parallel as sub awards, uh, NHGRI will consider uh, going in that direction as well. But I think you know, for the ACR team, indeed just really making sure that these data are integrated in a way that makes it usable, makes it uh, possible to develop approaches in the future that integrate across genomic uh, and clinical data and make at least some of the scenarios that clinical teams would really use in their research possible, that would be critical. And I think uh, as Gail suggested for the uh, main uh, in, uh, you know, renewal of uh, Anvil, for this too, I think feedback, right? Like having robust ways for the community and user feedback would be really helpful.
uh, since it will give you more potential scenarios and you won't be able to implement all of them, but then you can see what keeps emerging over and over again. Thank you. No, that's very, that's very informative. No, thank you for the feedback. Any other comments about the ACR from other council members? So uh, maybe I can just- Oh, I'm sorry, Rich. Yeah, please. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I'm used to being ignored. Um, <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> it just it hasn't helped <laughs> at all. Um, so, you know, I agree with Iftikhar and, and Olga again, but it's also the case that I, I think it would be great if we could, you know, take some, a step back and think about the use cases because uh, those are going to be critical. And it might be a good time to think about existing NHGRI resources as use cases, whether it's eMERGE networks or, you know, these new, especially the new diversity uh, genome research centers that could actually help address the question that Iftikhar had earlier. And how can, you know, we actually utilize something like ANVIL to help reduce the health disparities and reduce barriers to, to in inclusion, uh, as opposed to building up more barriers uh, that oftentimes happens with you know, increased technology. So I, I think, you know, think carefully about the use cases and I think that will help uh, drive a series of, of uh, applications in, in the clinical side. So, uh, but again, it's a very important project and uh, initiative for NHGRI. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, Any other comments about the ACR from the other council members? Okay, let's proceed to a vote then. Let's talk about the ANVIL renewal first. Can I get a motion to approve the concept? So move. A second. Second. All in favor, please hold your hand up for just a second. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Great, thank you. Okay, for the ACR, can I get a motion to approve the concept? So okay. move. And I heard a second in there. <laughs> can I, uh, all in favor, please raise your hand. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken and Chris. Let's move along to Ebony, are you with us? 